All right, guys, today we're going to talk about solving in vertex form. So we'll do that on 41 and 42. Um, so I'm going to show you, like, kind of how I set it up, and then I'm going to fill it all out with you. So you're, you should have three things, this note card, solving in vertex form, and then two books, square root method and simplifying radicals. So boop, boop. All righty, so let's talk about that. So when we are solving in vertex form, kind of before we do that, we need to remind ourselves how to simplify square roots um, because that's a skill we're going to need. So I want to actually look at this book here first. Oh my goodness, I just got rid of the thing that I needed. Hold on just a second. So um, when we say that we're going to simplify roots, we are going to square root. perfect squares and leave other numbers that you can't square root. Um, it does not mean give me a decimal. So like the thing is, I can take the square root of um, 16, that's 4, but I can't really take the square root of 17. It's like close to 4, but, and I even want to show you on a calculator um, what I mean by this. So the square root of 16, like I said, is 4. If I do 17 and take the square root, you're going to get this really gross decimal, really close to four. Um, and truly, this decimal goes on forever, and it does not repeat. It's an irrational number. And so kind of we want to simplify it, sort of like how we simplify a fraction. If I have four over 10, I want to simplify that to two over five. <laughs> so similarly, we want to do that with square roots. So when I have bigger square root numbers, chances are there's a perfect square hiding in there. And maybe you've made like a factor tree before. Those sort of always confused me. <laughs> so I found this other method to sort of factorize your number um, where we build a birthday cake. So I take 56 and I put that in the bottom layer of my birthday cake. And I pick a prime number that will divide into 56. So like 2, 3, 5, 7, are really good prime numbers. Nine is not a prime number because like three also goes into nine. So I noticed that this was even, so I'm just going to go with two. So like two goes into 56 uh, 28 times, and then two will go into 28 14 times, and I'm just going to keep going. Two goes into 14 seven times, and seven goes into itself birthday candle amount of time. So I know I built my birthday cake correctly when I get all the way to a one. And then because we're taking a square root and a square is like two, we're looking for the buddy system here. Anybody who has a buddy can come outside the root. Anybody who did not, uh, does not have a buddy stays under the root. And all these things here are being multiplied. So that'll be a 14. Now, sometimes we might just know that the square root of something is perfect, but if not, I can still birthday cake, so 225, and 5 will go into that um, 45 times, and then 5 will go into 45 9 times, 3 will go into 9 3 times, and then 3 goes into itself, birthday candle amount of times. And so... Again, buddy system here, we got a 3 and a 5 coming out for a total of 15 out and nothing left in. And so that kind of tells me that this was a perfect square, which maybe you already knew that. Um, and then last one here, 504, that's real big. Don't know if there's a perfect square hiding in there. We're going to do the buddy system. So 2 goes into 504, uh, 252 times. 2 goes into that. Uh, 66 times. Oh my gosh, that seems wrong. Um, well, maybe I'm not wrong. We'll just go with it. 
Two goes into that 33 times, so I'm definitely wrong. Two goes into, oh my gosh, not 66 times. What is wrong with me? Where is my, seriously, it's the morning. Okay, starting from right here, two goes into 252. What is wrong with me? 126 times. My birthday cake is so messed up. <laughs> Two goes into 126, 63 times. Three goes into that, 31 times. And then I think 31 is prime. This still feels wrong to me. Two goes into that, 63 times. Three goes into this, oh my goodness, 21 times. Seriously, y'all. Three goes into that seven times, and seven goes into itself once. Holy moly. Ugh. Anyways, buddy system, y'all. You need a buddy to help you do your math in the morning. So threes are coming out. Twos are coming out. So a three and a two for a six. And then what I have left inside is a two and a seven again. So 14. So six root 14. We got there in the end, y'all. Oh, my goodness. I guess I kind of knew I was wrong because I had the answers over here. So, like, that is a tricky thing. Like, how will you know that you're wrong? I guess how you could know you're wrong is, like, if I square 6 for 36 and then multiply that by 14, I should get 504 back. So, like, 36 times 14 is 504. So, it's kind of how you can know you're right or wrong. Fun fact. Um, I think I'm going to actually skip this one. Like, we multiply them by kind of doing inside numbers times each other. But, like, what's actually more important is the division stuff. Like, specifically these last two for what we're going to be doing with the radicals for right now. So, when you have a big divide bar like this, like, low-key, that means you're dividing each of these numbers by two. Um, so, sometimes it's better to sort of write it that way. And then you can see like 4 over 2, that's really just 2. Now, hopefully it makes sense and feels good that I shouldn't divide the 2 into the 8 because like I haven't taken the square root of 8 yet. But I wonder if I could birthday cake that. So 2 goes into 8 4 times. 2 goes into 4 2 times. And 2 goes into itself 1 time. And so a 2 can come out. And then a 2 is left in. And then we're still over 2. And now that I have an outside number, now I can divide these 2s. And so what you're left with overall is 2 plus root 2. Now, I don't know exactly how much root 2 is, so I can't really add it to the 2 yet. And so this is really our final answer here. Now, looking at D, I noticed that the denominator that I can, there I can take the square root of right now. So, like, I'm going to really call this 3 plus root 12 over 6. And then again, I kind of like to split it up because sometimes I forget, like, i got to divide everything. And so we're looking at half right here. But I wonder if I can't birthday cake that 12. Like, 2 goes into that 6 times, 2 goes into that 3 times, and 3 goes into itself 1 time. And so a 2 will come out, and it's going to be over the 6. So I can reduce that to a 3 on the bottom. And then I have a root 3, because that 3 is still left in. Now again, all of that, we sort of just needed to remind ourselves how to do so that when we solve in vertex form, kind of one of the last steps is a little bit easier. So um, first step always when we are solving any quadratic is that we have to be equal to zero. Now, sometimes we do some math to like subtract numbers or add numbers to the other side to be equal to zero, but sometimes we can just replace y with zero and that's it. And again, the reason we can do that is because specifically what we're looking for are the x-intercepts, and both those happen when y is equal to 0. So, like, that's what you're trying to find, so that's why you're allowed to just do this. Second thing you want to do, and the reason that I think solving in vertex form is kind of the second easiest way to solve, is we sort of just get x all by itself. There's only one x here, 
And so I should be able to like peel all the other numbers away like I normally solve for x. So we're going to follow, reverse, order of operations to get x alone. Like first you want to get rid of addition, subtraction, then multiplication, division, then exponents, and then parentheses. And so I'm going to kind of come back to this in just a second because I want you to see how this works because I think it's pretty intuitive. Like I think you'll just sort of understand how to get x by itself, but there's kind of two weird steps towards the end. So I'm just going to write this example underneath this, but I don't have paper. So let's say we are going to solve for x when we have the equation y equals 2 parentheses x minus 1 squared minus 50. Okay, so that's step one is to replace y with 0. And then we would get rid of addition and subtraction first, which maybe it kind of feels like we have two of those. But like this one here is trapped inside parentheses, and parentheses has to happen last. So really all I can do right now is add the 50 to both sides. And so I'll have 50 equals 2, parentheses x minus 1 squared. And then the next thing that we want to get rid of is multiplication or division. And so the thing that is being multiplied here is 2. And so we're going to divide that away. And so we'll have 25 equals that's 1 x minus 1 squared. So got rid of addition and subtraction, multiplication, division. Next thing to get rid of is exponents. And so hopefully we know that to get rid of something or to undo something being squared, we square root it. So like the square root of something squared will just cancel out and you're left with that thing. Like if you think about it, if I do 3 squared, that's 9. And then I square root it, that's just 3. So kind of the square root and square didn't even matter there. My answer is just 3. Same thing here. But then whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other. And so the square root of 25 is kind of 5, but it's also kind of negative 5. And the reason for that is because we're undoing. And so if you think about this going in the right direction, if I were to square these things to go back up, I can square 5 and get 25. But I could have also squared a negative 5 right here, and it would have been 25. So technically, um, this could be a positive 5 or a negative 5. Like we have this cute little plus minus symbol that, that we can use to represent plus and minus 5. Or positive and negative five, negative five, excuse me, because um, that's really what we have here. And then x is almost alone. Last thing we'll do is we will add one on both sides. And so finally, when x is by itself over here, what I truly have here is one plus five, and then also one minus five, and that's how we get our two different answers of six and negative 4, which if you remember, quadratics should have two answers, potentially just one answer or no answers. And so there we go. So if we jump to our other book now, we can do a whole, more, a whole bunch more practice problems like that. So the biggest thing is you want to know that you're in vertex form. And kind of the way that I know I'm in vertex form is if there's only one x. So because there's only one x here, I can just get it by itself. Now, I know we said we had to be equal to zero, but like, I mean, you can kind of just solve here. Ooh, ooh, I meant to the other little things here. So we follow our reverse order of operations. Kind of the new thing though here is to undo x squared. We square root, and then you have to put a plus or minus. That plus or minus is like super duper important. Lots of people tend to forget it, and so they end up with only one answer when we're supposed to probably have two answers. That was the other little thing I was going to add. Okay, sorry, going back to this one here. I feel like I can just get x alone right now. I don't necessarily need to make it equal to 0. So we're going to subtract the 5. Now it's 3x squared equals 36. 
And then I got to get rid of multiplication division. So I'll divide the 3. And I'll have 12. And then we got a square root to get rid of the squared. Now the square root of 12, I don't know. I do know that I have to have plus or minus. But I wonder if I can birthday cake that. So this is why we had to talk about how we simplify square roots. So like 2 goes into 12 6 times, 2 goes into 6 3 times, and 3 goes into itself for a candle amount of times. And so you'll have a 2 come out and the 3 stay in, and x is alone. So you're done. All right, trying the next one here. I would first want to get rid of addition and subtraction, which this one here is sort of trapped inside the parentheses. So I'm really just going to subtract the 5 first. And it's very tempting maybe to distribute, but we don't want to be doing math. We want to be undoing math. And so right now, instead of distributing that, I'm going to divide it instead of multiplying it. And so then my parentheses are unnecessary now. And now I feel like I can get rid of that 8, so like I'll add 8. So then x squared equals 18. And then we'll square root both sides. So x is equal to plus or minus whatever the square root of 18 is. Now maybe if you remember from last year or the year before, picking a square root that goes into 18. And that can make things a little faster, like 9 times 2 is 18 and 9 is real good because I can square root that and it's three. And then I'm gonna leave the two under the root because I don't know how much that is. Now technically for both of these, I have two answers because one of them is like positive two root three and then the other is like negative two root three and then kind of the same thing there, so. Alrighty, let's try some other ones. Now looking at A right here, I want to first, like there is no addition subtraction at the back there. I think I first need to get rid of that one fifth. So we don't really divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. So we're gonna multiply by five on both sides. Um, so that will cancel out to one, and so we'll just have x plus three squared equals 75. Next thing I feel like I need to get rid of here is square root both sides. Um, to get rid of that squared, which really is just going to leave me with the x plus 3 under. Now the squared is 75. Again, if you're getting a little bit better at the <clears throat> recognizing perfect squares things, maybe we can see that this is 25 times 3. And so we'll have plus or minus 5 root 3. Now to get x alone, I need to subtract 3 to both sides, but like I don't really know how much 5 root 3 is, so I can't really subtract the 3 from either of those, like the positive or the negative of that. And so your answer is just going to look like a little bit of a mess. Like we're going to have negative 3 plus or minus 5 root 3. And again, that is two different answers because we have like negative 3 plus the 5, which puts me somewhere. And then the negative 3 minus the 5 root 3, which puts me somewhere else. And again, like, because I don't know how much 5 root 3 is, this is just, like, what your answer is going to look like. So, trying another sort of weird one like that. <clears throat> I think I would first add the 5. So, parentheses 6x minus 3 squared equals 27. Next thing in my way over here is the exponent. So, I'm going to square root that. And so we'll have 6x minus 3 equals, so that's going to be 9 times 3, so plus or minus 3 root 3. And then here's why we really wanted to talk about the division. Like, I know to get x alone, I need to add 3 and then divide the 6. But, like, when I do it to the other side, because I don't know how much this 3 root 3 is, we're not going to actually do a lot here. So we'll add the 3. But that's just going to look like 3 plus or minus 3 root 3, because I can't actually add or subtract it. And then I divide by 6, and I'm dividing everything by 6 here, which that I feel like I can reduce a little bit. So, like, remember, we're dividing both of these for half, 
and we can divide both of these for half. And then we got a root 3 attached to it. Okay, I think I'm actually going to leave the little Pythagorean theorem thing alone. I think we're good on that. So I'll see you in the next one.